I hear appraisers complain about their clients. They complain about their situation, the low fees, the high scope of work. Can you believe they asked me to do this? Then why are you working for them? Originating from deep inside the Rocky Mountains, transported through the power of the internet, and arriving inside your tiny earbuds, it's the Appraiser Coach Podcast. Minisode. 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 I had an opportunity to go to lunch with a friend uh, the other day, and it's a it's an establishment that I've actually been to a lot uh, over the years. Uh, it's one of our our meeting places that we go to quite uh, frequently. And uh, he was a little bit late uh, coming and I was standing outside uh, just kind of finishing some phone calls and and different things before I went inside uh, so that I didn't uh, uh, disturb the other patrons of the restaurant. And I noticed a sign that I've probably seen a thousand times, but I've just never noticed it uh, at this particular uh, establishment. And it's a sign that you've probably seen a thousand times at a thousand different establishments across the world, right? And it's the sign that says, we reserve the right to refuse service to anyone. I want to talk about that today, but I want to pause here to remind you that we are sponsored by ANOW Software. That's a company that's not going to refuse service to you because that's what they're all about is service. Service to the appraiser, the ability to be able to help you to do more with less. That's what ANOW Software's goal is. That's what their mission in life is, and that's what they do for me every day. Go to ANOW.com slash coach. Again, it's ANOW.com slash coach. Folks, we've seen this uh, sign in various establishments across uh, our world. Uh, We reserve the right to refuse service to anyone. Why is that sign up there? Why is that sign up there? Well, I think that, uh, that, first of all, I don't think there's anybody on this planet that would say that a restaurant, as long as they're not doing so on racial lines or sexual orientation or uh, you know, gender or you know, minority status, what have you, as long as, as, long as uh, they're doing it based on the fact that you're just a rude dude right, uh, and we don't want to serve you here, I don't think there's anybody that would say that they don't have that right to do that. So why put up the sign? I don't know, maybe for liability reasons, but it, it made me think about something because I was I was standing in line or, or, or standing outside waiting for my friend to arrive. And I saw this sign. And I just got to thinking about it. I thought, you know, it's funny how often we see things all the time and we just, you know, we just get used to seeing these things and and we don't really give them any second thought because I have been in this restaurant multiple times. I would say over the years, I don't think it's it's probably an exaggeration to say that I've probably spent 50, maybe 75 hours in this particular establishment over the years, okay? Uh, it's one that I frequent quite often, and I go there with friends, and, and we, we have a nice lunch, and, you know, it's pretty cheap food, but it's uh, it's fairly healthy, and, and it's, it's a great place, a great environment uh, to, to sit down and to have a good discussion about business or life or relationships or what have you. I've been there a lot, and, and I've never once seen anybody refused service. In other words, this is not something that's – does it really warrant a sign, right? Is it really – uh, the the owner of this establishment, I should have just asked him. I said, you know what what is it about about your business model that pushes you to think that this would be a good idea to have this sign out there? I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I'm just curious. I'm a curious person by nature, and and I and I just had this thought. You know, how often have they actually had to kick somebody out and then have somebody say, you know, turn around and say, well, damn it, you can't do that, and then they point to the sign and say, well, you know, the sign was right there, right. <laughs> I just don't see this playing out that way. But but nonetheless, it, it got me thinking because the next morning I, I woke up to, uh, I, I, you know, I, I usually do my prime time in the morning and, and get myself ready for the day. And then, you know, I might check my email and then I might, uh, you know, do a few things and I might check uh, Facebook a couple times throughout the day. And as you know, I follow some of these uh, online forums that are uh, you know out there for appraisers to to kind of, you know, vent and, and ask questions and what have you. I happen to be a little biased toward the all-star team group uh, simply because we have a no negative policy. And uh, and so, you know, you can ask any question you want in my group and not get ridiculed. Um, but I woke up the next morning and I, and, I, and I was on Facebook and I read a comment. And it's, you know, it's a comment that comes up all the time, all the time. And, and I just, 
I just want to jump on there and I just want to make one statement. And, and that's it. Just leave it, leave it at that. Just make one statement. I'll tell you what that statement is in just a minute, but I first want to remind you that a statement that I'm going to make loud and clear is this statement, A now will change your life. It will change your business. It will allow you as an appraiser to do more with less. You'll be able to keep track of every single appraisal order that's going through the pipeline. By the way, I had an opportunity to mentor with another appraiser uh, just a little while ago, um, and uh, he with a screen share, showed me what he's using to keep track of his appraisal assignments. And uh, the honest truth is, is uh, uh, even if you're a sponsor here, I'm going to be completely honest, right? So hey, now, hold tight. Uh, let me just be completely honest. I was, uh, I was impressed. I was impressed with what they had. Um, they did not have all of the features that ANOW had, and they were more expensive than what ANOW is, um, but they were pretty impressive what they could do. You know, there is some competition out there, ANOW, um, but I'll tell you, I'm going to stick with ANOW because uh, the the investment is low as far as, you know, what I have to pay on a monthly basis and what I receive in return is absolutely amazing. You'll find that as well. Uh, so check out the competition. Look around. See what's out there. And I think you'll come back to ANOW. Go to ANOW.com slash coach for more information. Again, it's ANOW.com slash coach. And we are back, folks. We're talking today... I'm just venting a little bit, I guess. I saw this sign at a restaurant that I frequent, and uh, the sign says, we reserve the right to refuse service to anyone. And I assume they put that up there to, you know, in case they've got an unruly customer, feel like they can push them out. No. Keep it, keep this in mind for just a second. If you are a restaurant, a coffee shop, a retail store, you know, whatever, and you've got an unruly customer, I would say that we would all believe that it's absolutely well, it's a given that you have the right to to refuse uh, service to somebody that's going to be disruptive to your business, that's going to be disruptive to other clients and customers. Um, but here's the thing, folks: why would you why would you refuse service to somebody who's going to pay you money? Now, I know the way that I asked that, you're going to think that I'm going to say you wouldn't, right? No, you absolutely would. <laughs> you would and should, right? Why would you refuse service to someone who is going to pay you money? Because sometimes it ain't worth it. Sometimes the crap that you have to put up with is not worth whatever money's coming your way. And some things are, are just better to make a, a strong decision to say, hey, you know what? I'm not going to work for you anymore. You're not going to pay me money to serve you anymore. And here's the thought that I had when I was on Facebook. And it's a thought that I have quite often on Facebook, especially on some of these forums that get a little bit negative. And it's something that that, that Mark uh, Skapanitz and I have talked about. He's uh, he's the uh, uh, the owner, the uh, the mentor, uh, the uh, the establisher of the hundred percent real estate appraiser group on Facebook. And sometimes that group gets a little negative. And I say, and I and I've said to to, to Mark, I said, how do you put up with that? Why do you put up with that? And, and his attitude, I, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but he's been on this program and he said, you know, I, I want it to be an open forum where anybody can say anything, you know, other than getting political. I, I want it to be able to, to be a place where they can vent. And I respect that. And I think that's great. It's not the group that I have with, with the all-star team, but I absolutely respect that. And I, and I can see some wisdom there. You know, as a group of people, just as a person in general, sometimes you just need a place that you can vent. There's nothing wrong with that, and I'm not, I'm not saying anything against that today. What I'm saying is sometimes I want to say just one thing back to them, okay? Sometimes I, I, I see comments on Facebook. I saw one just this morning. This is what perpetuated this, okay? Just this morning, I see an individual. I'm just going to paraphrase, and I don't even remember which group it was. I don't remember if it was Mark's group or, or some other group. I really don't. There, there are several that I follow. In fact, there's seven or eight that I follow, some more active than others. And this individual got on there and they said, can you believe this? My client, but, but, you know, this AMC sent over this, da, 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 and they want this, da, 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 da. And I looked at it and I thought, yeah, it does seem a little ridiculous, but here's the comment that I wanted to say back. And I just, I, I held my tongue. I, I held my fingers. I didn't, I didn't get on the keyboard, but I, I want to often say, then why are you working for them? That's it. Nothing more. Then why are you working for them? 
I hear appraisers complain about their clients. They complain about their situation, the low fees, the high scope of work. Can you believe they asked me to do this? Then why are you working for them? It sounds to me like they're a why client. I mean, if this is something, maybe if this is a one-off situation and it only happens once in a while, okay, fine. I've got B clients that sometimes send me things over and I roll my eyes and go, really? Okay, whatever, right? But I don't jump on a, on a public forum and complain about it typically. Not Again, not that I'm saying that's a bad thing. I really am not. I, I think that there needs to be a place where you can vent. But if this is something that happens on a regular basis, and it seems like it's the same people over and over and over again on these groups saying, look what they made me do now. And last week they made me do this. And next week they're probably going to make me do this. And I think, then why are you working for them? Appraisers, I want us to step back and just consider who our clients are and the freedoms that we enjoy in this country. And I know some of you are screaming at your earbuds and saying, Dustin, do you not get it? I don't have a choice. We got this stupid AMC model nationwide. I I don't have a choice. Yeah, you do. Now, let's be honest. You don't maybe have a choice today to fire all your clients and expect to get new clients by tomorrow. Okay. That's not realistic. And I would never teach that. But I'll tell you folks, I've had mastermind students, one in particular that I'll do a quick shout out to, his first name starts with an M, who when he started with me years ago was mostly AMC. In fact, I'm, I think 95% AMC. He's now 75% plus non-AMC work. He's working for very, very few and just top-notch AMCs. Why? Because he has worked diligently to change his business model. He now goes after non-lender business, not just even brick and mortar. When I say non-AMC, 75% is non-lender. That's attorneys. That's realtors. That's homeowners. He's doing a very huge volume because he has made a decision that he was going to refuse service to the idiots that he didn't want to work with anymore. Appraisers, you should too. Again, if one of your clients once in a while asks for something stupid, that's one thing, right? Going back to my analogy to begin this episode, if uh, you know, if if somebody were sitting in this diner and uh, and they asked for you know their potatoes extra crispy, and they uh, you know they came back extra crispy, and they say you know hey I changed my mind I want them soft now take it back okay. I would assume this diner would just do it and smile and say, my apologies, sir, let me fix the problem and and just deal with it, right? A one-off situation like that is not the end of the world. But if this person is belligerent, if this person is swearing and yelling and carrying on, well, guess what? That little sign that they have out front, it probably goes into effect. We reserve the right to refuse service to anyone. You do too, appraisers. You reserve the right to refuse service to anyone. You are not forced to work for anyone. Just something to think about. Again, once in a while, something comes back, you kind of roll your eyes, you move on. That's part of doing business, right? No client is going to be perfect. I had a situation uh, just the other day with one of my A clients. It's an A client, okay? Not a B client, an A client. Now, it's a direct lender. It's not an AMC, but uh, this company is one I've been working for for years and years and years, and they asked us to go out and do a 1004D final. And nowhere in there did it say an update. And we accepted the fee, and I went out, and I did the final. And when I turned it in, they asked for an addendum, a revision request to fill out the update. And I said, whoa, 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 hold on a second. You didn't ask for an update up front. We can do an update, okay, but it's going to be a much higher fee. We got to pull comps. We got to make adjustments. We got to uh, look at the market as a whole. I mean, it, it had been a couple of years, actually, since we did the original. Uh, which is unusual, Uh, not six months, not three months, but two years, almost two years since we did the original. And uh, I went back very kindly, very professionally. Okay, that's the key here. And I said, you've asked for an addendum revision to fill out the the, uh, update, but this is not an addendum. This is a new scope of work. This is a new assignment. And guess what? I was actually a little bit fearful when I sent it off because here's an A client, I worked for him for years and I didn't want to upset him. And so I'm a little bit fearful about what they would come back and say. You know, sometimes you get these clients that say, no, no, no. We meant update when we said 1004D and we want you to do it. And we want you to do it for the fee that you asked for, right? It's a little bit fearful that that would occur. 
Well, to their credit, this is why they're an A client. They wrote back and they said, you're absolutely right, Dustin. We didn't realize what we had ordered when we ordered it. We did order a a final. We did not order an update. And the client now wants an update. So what is your fee? And we told them their fee and they paid it for uh, paid it to us and we did it. That's an A client. That's the kind of client that I want to work for. And that's the kind of clients that you should be looking to work for. But folks, every day, every day I see individuals jumping on and saying, look at my AMC did, and they'll do screenshots and they'll do this and they'll do that. And I'm thinking, then why are you working for them? You do, you do have a choice. Folks, you also have a choice as to whether or not you're going to join my all-star team. I would encourage you to do so. It's only nine bucks a month. What do you get? Well, one of the great things that you get in addition to the newsletter in both the digital and audio format, so you can listen while you drive, great information, eight page, fully packed, 4,300 words every single month about details concerning my appraisal office and how I run things and some of my mastermind students and how they run things. But you also get access to a very positive and uplifting forum online, the opportunity for you to vent if you want but mostly to get advice and to share ideas and to uh, ask questions where you're not going to feel ridiculed. That's the all-star team. Nine bucks a month, folks. It's even cheaper if you pay annually. Jump on there, theappraisercoach.com. Go to memberships. Love to have you part of the group. You've been listening to the Appraiser Coach Podcast with Dustin Harris. If you like what you hear, please give us a five-star rating and post a short review on iTunes. For more in-depth insider information on how you can make more money as a real estate appraiser, visit theappraisercoach.com and sign up for the All-Star Team today. Thanks for joining us. And now, get out there and create some value. You know, you've asted, you've, you've asted.